Hi everyone, Joe here from thekissprinciple.net. Thank you so much for stopping past this YouTube channel. Hope you're having a great day in Jesus' name. And I'm back here again in the music room and I want to show you my music clock. And uh, this hangs above the piano and I think it is one of the most valuable tools that you can have where you can understand on how music works, how songs are put together. So how do we use it? I'm about to show you. Let's go. Okay, so I've got the clock just propped up here on the piano so you can easily see it. What's some of the things that we can learn about the music clock? Well, the first thing we can learn from it is how many sharps and flats there are in a key signature. And if we go to the top of the clock here, that is the key of C. Now, some of you that have know a little bit about music or a lot about music, you'll know that in the key of C, there are no sharps or flats. So on a piano, we're referring to that as the black keys. So the key of C, we just quickly play the scale here. That's all white keys. There are none of these black keys, which are sharps and flats. So no sharps or flats in the key of C. Now we move across to the next key here on the right, the key of G. Now just pretend that where the G is, there's the numeral one, and we're going around one, two, three, four, five, as we normally would on a clock. Now the key of G is at the numeral one, and the key of G has one sharp in it. Now what sharp is that? From here, if you just go back to, you're at an F. So the key of G has got one sharp in it, and that's F sharp. Let's go along to the key of D. The key of D has two sharps in it, because here it's at the two o'clock position. What are they? Let's just go back here. It is a C sharp, and we're actually adding the sharps as we're going along. So we've got F sharp and C sharp in the key of D. Let's go to the key of A. The key of A has got three sharps in it, because it's at the three o'clock position. So what's the next sharp that uh, comes along? Go back to up here, it's G. So in the key of A, you've got F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. Let's go down to the key of E. The key of E has got four sharps in it because it's at the four o'clock position. What are the sharps? Go back to, we're adding another sharp, it's D sharp. Now, and so on. If we're going back the other way, we're going into flats. Now, of course, just try and picture the mirror image of what we've got on the right, but except we're adding a flat here. Remember, key of C, no sharps or flats. We're going to the key of F. We are adding one flat. So what flat is it? For this one, just go across one, B flat. So in the key of F, there is one flat, B flat. Let's go across to the next one. We're in the key of B flat. There are two flats in the key of B flat. What are they? Let's move up one, E flat. We just add another one. So we've got B flat and E flat and so on as we go around the circle. So what else can we learn from the music clock? Every major scale has a relative and that is a minor scale. Now, what I like to think of a major scale this way. Uh, in Western music, a major scale is used the majority of the time with the chords um, and melodies that go along with it. And as, as you know, for every majority, there is also a minority. So um, for, for example, the C major scale, if we want to find out what its relative minor is, all we need to do is just think of three o'clock. So if we're in the key of C here, pretend that we're going to three o'clock. It's not three o'clock at the moment, but if we go to three o'clock, we land on A. So the C major scale, the relative minor scale is A minor. Let's try it with another key. Now I'm just going to rotate this clock around a little bit. So say for example, here we are, we're in the key of G and we pretend that it's three o'clock over here to the right, we land on the E. So the relative minor scale in the key of G is E minor. Let's go to the key of D. Three o'clock position again. The relative minor for D major is B minor and so on and so on. Some of the other things that we can learn about the musical clock 
is what are the major and minor chords that we can use in a particular song or chord progression. And uh, let's stick to the key of C because that's a nice easy one to start with. The key of C is up the top here. And if we go from the key of C and we go to the right and we go to the left, we notice that we are, we've got the chords G and F. They just happen to be the major chords which fall into a typical 1-4-5 chord progression in the key of C. Now the fancy word for it of course is dominant and subdominant but I'm not going to get caught up in music jargon um, today. Just think of it this way. We have the key of C which is the, um, the beginning of the scale and it's also the one chord or the root chord. There's many different ways to describe that and we're going to go to the right we've got the G chord. It's also referred to as the five chord. We're going to go to the left and we've got the F chord or the four chord. So they are your major chords in the key of C. Now let's pick another key. We're in the key of G. Let's do the same thing again. We'll go to the right and we'll go to the left. Your one chord is the G chord. Your five chord is the D chord. Your C chord is your four chord. So you have now just worked out what your major chords are in the key of G. Let's go to the key of D. Your D is your one chord. We go to the right. A is your five chord. G is your four chord and so on and so on. And we can go down towards the, uh, the, the flat keys. We're in the key of F, C chord, B flat chord. So that's your major chords. Now what about your minor chords? Back to the key of C, we'll go to three o'clock position and again we'll go to the right and we'll go to the left. There's A minor, we go to the right, E minor, to the left, D minor. Let's go to the key of G. Three o'clock, E minor, to the right, B minor, to the left, a minor. So depending on what song key you're in, you have pretty much worked out what all the major and minor chords are in that particular key just simply by using the musical clock. Now another reference to this of course is the circle of fifths, um, but I'm trying not to get too complicated um, with all of this, especially those of you that are just getting into music and you want to know how the chords all fit together in a particular key. Another thing that we can learn about the musical clock is how songs are put together. Now if you wonder how um, songwriters do this, they don't really reinvent the wheel or the circle, they use the circle. And say for example, we'll stick to the key of C. And here's your C chord. And the songwriter will come along and say, okay, the next chord that we're going to play, it's going to be an E minor chord. So here's E minor, we've gone from C to E minor, so C. There's your E minor chord. Now, the number two chord is always the hardest one to work out in a song. So we've, we've done the, f uh, the first chord, which was a C. Um, once you know what the second chord is, you can almost predict which way the song is going to head. Not all the time, but most of the time. So, say the songwriter started off on the C chord and went to the E minor chord. So here's E minor. What do you think that the next chord that comes along is going to be? Because remember the objective of music is to get back to home base here. So we've gone from a C chord to an E minor chord. Well, the next most likely one, it's going to be A minor. Remember how I said to you, three o'clock position, you've got your minor chords here, A minor, E minor, and D minor. So we've traveled from C chord to E minor, C, to E minor, the next one, A minor, and D minor coming up next. Let's go to F, G, that just simply flows in a song, doesn't it? Now, um, because music has to take travel away from home, but we always need to get back home again. 
So that is how musicians sit down and write songs. This is how if a bunch of musicians get together and we've never played together before, but we're going to say, hey, we're going to just do this song. It's going to be a 1-4-5 and a 6 minor um, in the key of C. This is how we work it all out. So, okay, 1-4-5, 6 minor. Um, we're in the key of C. A minor. The next likely chord that's going to come along, it's D minor. Let's go to the F chord, G chord, over here. Isn't that kind of cool? So let's go to another key here. Let's go to the key of G. The key of G is one of my favourite keys to play in. It's kind of like my, uh, my feel-good key. So here we are in the key of G. And you probably worked out, I've written the minors underneath the majors to make it a bit more easy. But just for the purpose of the demonstration, so that we can see how it all works, look along the side here. So we're in the key of G, we know that the majors are going to be your D and your C chord. And remember, we're going to take a bit of a journey away from home. We're going to oh, maybe just land uh, here. We're going to land on A minor. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to a D. D major, C major, back to a G. So here we go, G chord, A minor, D major, C, back to the G. So I hope you got something out of that. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, it also tells the time as well. Oh, I better stop it with the clock jokes, otherwise I'm going to have to take five. <laughs> so I hope you got uh, something out of that today. Don't forget to subscribe to us on this channel, thekissprinciple.net. Always take time out for practice. No, no more clock jokes. Have a great day. God bless.